In this video, I'll show you how to add quizzes to your courses in MemberPress courses. For my WordPress dashboard, if I go to MemberPress and Courses, you can see here I have some courses already built in my site. I'm going to be using this one to add a few quizzes. So I'll go ahead and click the course to open the editor. The first thing I need to do is enable some settings. So here at the top, I'll click Settings. Now, there are three settings here that pertain to the quizzes feature. The first, require previous lesson slash quiz, makes it so a previous lesson or quiz must be completed before a user can start on the next lesson or quiz. Also, the first lesson of a section will require the last lesson or quiz of the previous section to be completed before being able to start it. To illustrate this, I'll go back to my curriculum and just as an example, if I enable the Require Previous Lesson Quiz option I just showed you, if I created a quiz as the last item in this section, this quiz would need to be completed by the user in order to start this first lesson of the next section here. So I'll go back to Settings and enable this option. So if you don't want users to be able to skip ahead without completing all your course material, you'll want to enable this setting. Next, you see Show Question Results. I'll show you what these two options look like later in the video after I create my quiz, but show question results will show students whether the answer they provided was correct or not. Don't enable this option if you don't want students to know which questions they answered correctly or incorrectly. I'm going to enable this option, and you'll see what it looks like for students later in the video. The next option, show question answers, will show students the correct answers to questions after they finish the quiz. To have show question answers enabled, it'll enable show question results along with it, which you can see here. You can, however, choose to only enable show question results and not show the answers if you want. For my quiz, I'm going to enable all these options. Then I'll click update to save these changes. Next, I'll go to the curriculum tab. To add a quiz, you'll see here at the bottom of your sections, you'll have options to add a lesson and to add a quiz. So I'll click Add a Quiz and type a name for it, like Chapter 1 Quiz. Now, if you hover over the quiz and click the Edit button here in the middle, it'll prompt you that you're leaving the course editor, and since I didn't click Update after creating my new quiz, I'll click Save and Exit so it saves my new quiz. Then, it'll redirect me to the Quiz Edit page. Now, before creating my quiz, just one note. If you have a plugin enabled like Classic Editor, you won't see this view and won't be able to build your quiz in the way I'm going to show you. You'll need to be in the WordPress Block Editor, which you see here, to build your quiz. Next, clicking the plus sign button will display the quiz blocks you have available to use. And you can see those here under Courses Questions. You can just click which one you want to add, and it'll add them, one below the other, here on the quiz page. You can also drag and drop them onto the page too. You can click on a block here and use these arrows to change the order of them. Or drag and drop them like this in order to change their order as well. You can also click this icon here to duplicate your blocks, remove them from the page, and more. So now, I'll go through each question type to show you how they work. I'll click the first one here, Multiple Choice, to add it to my quiz page. This will display a question and a selection of answers where only one answer is correct. I'll click here where it says Multiple Choice Question and enter my question. Since this is a sample cookie baking course and this is a quiz for my first chapter or section of my course, I'll create basic questions for things covered in the first section of my course. So for this question, I'll enter, when were the first cookies thought to be invented? Then here, you enter your answers. I'll type my first answer, then I'll click Add Answer Option, enter another answer, and then I'll add two more. Then, using these radio buttons here, select which answer is the correct one. In my case, it's 7th century AD, so I'll select that. Now, with the block still selected over here, on the right, under the Block tab here, you'll see a few options. Here, you can select whether or not you want the question to be required in order to complete the quiz. You can also set how many points this particular question is worth. I'll change mine to 3 points. 
The next field here, feedback for wrong answer, is where you can enter text a user will see when they get this answer wrong. You can create a custom message and display the correct answer here. For example, I'll enter, sorry, the correct answer is 7th century AD. The info in this box only displays if a user answers this question incorrectly and if show question answers is enabled in the course settings that we saw earlier. If show question answers isn't enabled in the settings, then the text in this box won't be displayed. And you don't have to enter anything in this box if you don't want. It's just a way to customize what your students see when they get a question wrong. If you don't enter anything in this text box, it'll simply display the correct answer if you have it set to do so in your settings. We'll see what that looks like later. So next, I'll go to my blocks and click to add the next type to my page, multiple answer. This is similar to multiple choice, but you can select more than one answer to be correct. So I'll enter a question. Then I'll add some answer options. I'll enter two correct answers and two incorrect answers. Then I'll use these checkboxes to select which two of my answers are correct. And again, over here for the block settings, I'll keep this set to required, set it to be worth two points, and for this, I won't enter anything for feedback for wrong answer. Now, going back to the blocks, the next question type is true-false. This one's simple. Either true or false is the correct choice. I'll enter a question and click the radio button next to true, since true is the correct answer. I'll leave this set to one point, and I won't enter anything here for feedback for wrong answer. So next is a short answer question. This enables a short essay type of answer for a question you enter here. You could set it to be required and set the points, but you'll notice there isn't a spot for feedback for wrong answer. That's because points are awarded for this for just answering these questions, as there's no way to grade these types of questions and reward points after. So in short, students get points just for answering this type of question. You'll see what this looks like for a student later in the video. So I'll make this question worth one point. And going back over here, the last type of question is an essay. I'll click that, and I'll enter the question here. This lets you set a minimum and maximum number of characters, so the student must at least reach your minimum character length set here, but not exceed the maximum. I'll set the minimum to be 200 characters and the max to be 2,000, just as an example. And if you want, you can add other types of blocks to your quiz page too. Just to keep it simple, I'll add a paragraph here that says, thanks for completing the first quiz. Submit your answers below. Then to save everything, I'll click update here. It'll notify me that it's been updated and give me an option here to view the quiz. I'll click that and it'll take me to my quiz, logged in as my admin user. For my first question, I'll go ahead and select an incorrect answer. I'll answer my other questions. And for my essay, I'll first type an answer that doesn't reach the minimum characters that I set. Now I'll click Submit, and you can see a notification that I must enter more characters on my essay. I'll fill out more characters with my answer. Then I'll click Submit. And when the page refreshes, it shows me what questions I got right and which ones are incorrect. With my percentage score here. Then, if I click Continue, you can see that I'm taken to the next lesson in my course. You can see that if I click my quiz, I can go back and see my results. And if I try to change the answer I got wrong, I won't be able to, since my results were already submitted. You'll notice, too, that the short answer and essay questions registered correct for the student, which will happen as long as they enter something and adhere to the character limits on the essay. Now, I'll navigate back to my courses and click my course, go to Curriculum, and click to edit my quiz again. You can see that I'm prompted with this pop-up. This quiz already has attempts recorded for it. Do you want to delete all attempts? Since it's registering that someone already submitted the quiz, if I go back in and try to edit the quiz, I must delete all attempts before being able to, since changing the quiz by adding questions or modifying them will break your student's scores. If you click this link here, already has attempts, it'll display all users who have submitted this quiz. 
you'll see the user's name, their score, and when they completed the quiz. If you hover over the user and click View, you can see their quiz results. You can also hover over their name and click Delete, which will remove your student's answers and score. So, once they go back into their course, they'll have to submit the quiz again in order to progress in the course, if you selected the option to require the quiz in your settings. I'll go back to my quiz edit page, and go ahead and click Delete. It'll prompt me if I'm sure, and then I'll click OK. In here, you can click your blocks and edit them how you want. And here on the right, if you click the Quiz tab, you'll see some options pertaining to this quiz. You can search questions from any other quizzes you have on any of your courses, and you can click to add it to the bottom of your current quiz page, or you can drag and drop them in. Here, you can set the slug for your quiz URL, and click to view your quiz with this link here. Now, real quick, just to show you what this looks like on the front end for a user, I'll open my site in a new incognito window in Google Chrome, so I'm not logged in as my site's admin. Now, I have a rule set up that only lets those with a pro membership on my site access my courses. So, I'll go up to Login, and log in with a test user that I created earlier that has a pro membership. Once logged in as a test user, I'll go to Members Only and Courses, and go to my Cookie course. I'll go ahead and progress through the first lessons, and then I'll reach my quiz. I'll try to skip ahead to the first lesson in the next section, and you can see that I'm not able to, so as the test user, I have to complete the quiz first before moving on in the course. I'll go ahead and answer the questions, some correct and some not, and fill out my short answer, and then I'll fill out my essay, making sure that I have enough characters. Then I'll submit the quiz, and it'll show me what I got wrong with the correct answers. Then I'll click continue, and you can see it moves me on to the next lesson. Now, as the test user, I'll navigate back to the cookie course again. You can see here my progress, and here next to the quiz, it gives me my score. And as the test user, I can click view and view the results again here. Still, as my test user, I can also navigate back to the site homepage and go to the members only links I have set up and click account. Then, from the member press account page, I can click the courses tab and see my course progress here. And if I click on the course, I'm taken back to the course. Now, I'll go ahead and exit this incognito window that's logged in as my test user. Then, as my site admin, go into the settings. Next, I'll disable Show Question Answers and Show Question Results to show you what having these settings disabled looks like to your students. So, I'll click Update to save these changes. Then, I'll go back to the course page and open my course link in a new incognito window. Then, I'll log in with a different test user account I created earlier that has a pro membership as well. Then, I'll progress through the course as my new test user until I get to my quiz. Then I'll complete the quiz. I'll submit some correct answers and some wrong ones, and I'll click Submit. Then it progresses me to the next lesson. Now if I go back to the course curriculum page, I can see my score for the quiz here, and if I click View, I can see the answers I submitted as a test user, but I can't change them and I can't see the correct answers. So real quick to show you even further, I'll minimize this incognito window and go back to my course settings as the admin. Then I'll choose to enable show question results only, and show question answers will remain disabled. I'll click update and let it save. Then I'll go back to the incognito window as my test user, and refresh the quiz results page. Now it tells me which questions I have correct or incorrect, but I still can't see the answers. So it's working how it's set up. I'll minimize this incognito window again, Go back to the course settings as my admin, and now I'll enable show question answers. Then I'll click update. Then I'll go back to my incognito window, hit refresh, and now it shows the test user the correct answers too.
I'll minimize this incognito window to show you one final thing. If you want to allow a user to retake the quiz, you can just delete their current attempt. So, now that I have some test users who've taken my quiz, I'll show you how to do that. So, as my site admin, still in my course, I'll go to the Curriculum tab and click to edit my Chapter 1 quiz. I'll see this pop up again, and I'll click this link here to see all attempts for this quiz. I'll hover over the last test user that took the quiz and click Delete to remove their attempt. Now, I'll open my incognito window again with the test user that I just deleted the quiz attempt of still logged in. And then I'll go back to the course curriculum. And now you can see that the quiz has been reset and the user can retake it. And that's it. You've now seen how to create a quiz in MemberPress courses. See our knowledge base for more information on creating courses in MemberPress. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, be sure to like, subscribe, and check out our other videos that makes getting MemberPress up and running a breeze.